Hi, I'm Nate, and this is Photo Learningism. We're going to continue on the mini series that we kicked off a couple weeks ago, looking at accomplishing special custom transitions in Kden Live, and we got some more exciting stuff to do. Let's look at the next one in sequence of my transition. Here it is right now. Okay, so once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. We're going to get back into custom transitions in Kden Live. This is a very exciting piece of the video that we've been doing. Let's just jump right into the workspace here. So, getting over to here, um, the transition that we're going to be doing is this one, where it's kind of similar to the first one. We did kind of like the zoom blur effect. This one is is kind of like that, but it gets almost like warped, like you're bending the lens around what you're trying to do. And this was a really tricky one, by the way. Spent some time on this. So in order to get this effect where you're transitioning from one where it really severely bends the lens into it and then bends back into it, one to the other, what I had to do was one image at a time, and I tried to use the actual reference images this time because that might be clearer just to see that way, is I took a, one clip here, and first thing to do, and this is really the same on either side, is do a position and zoom and that's pretty straightforward. It's just you have a keyframe where you start and you have a keyframe where you end, uh, zooming into uh, really close to it. So that's kind of the forward motion to get that done that way. The rest of this is just a ton of lens corrections. Um, I did a little bit of brightness and fade out. That's just kind of get the flash effect. That's, that's pretty basic. But the rest of these really are just two keyframes, one at the beginning, one at the end and particularly manipulating the center correction value. The rest you just leave exactly as they are. What that does is, well, what the lens correction effect does is that you're trying to correct fisheye. In this case, we're actually putting it back in. But the challenge is that you can only put so much back in because the effect is not really designed to really warp to the extreme like this. And this is the closest effect I could find by the way to do this. So that's why it takes a stack of so many of these to compound that effect of bend this to the extreme back around the, the virtual lens. Uh, so that's the same really for the starting point and the end point. They actually took fewer of them to get the effect. And I think because the image doesn't really have a lot to manipulate, the second one worked a little simpler. Um, but again, a little bit of brightness to kind of bring it back from bright to normal. Um, the opposite of that is where you start, where the brightness kind of goes from normal into bright. Uh, so you can kind of get how that works, I think. But that's really kind of the mechanics of what happens. And what we get, again, I'm going to play the original for you, is this, where it kind of warps in, and this is what I came up with, which is pretty close, I think. And it's all using stuff that's baked into Kaden Lab. Now, you start to notice a little bit of pixel pixelation there. I don't really know of a way around that because as you start to really warp the lens, Kaden Live starts to get confused by the compoundedness of that many lens corrections. So a little bit of trade-off. What you might try doing in that case is that as it starts to warp, is actually implemented just a little bit of blur. Um, I did not because I was trying to keep the whatever <laughs> whatever crispness was left of it there, but at that point, you're kind of sacrificing it. So really close again where we get that extreme bend warp zoom effect and then back in. And I call that a success. I think that's actually pretty awesome that we can duplicate that uh, for this transition. If you haven't seen the other videos, go check them out over there. <laughs> really what we're doing here is I had contracted some help to get my introduction redone with a whole new stack of transitions and effects. And uh, they were not done in Kaden Live, to my knowledge. So we are taking something that was designed in another tool and seeing, hey, can we duplicate that? Somebody actually asked this question, which is a great question. Can you do those in Kaden Live? And I'm figuring out if you can. So <clears throat> thank you for checking this out. Excuse me. This is a kind of a, a mini jump. It took much longer to compose this than to actually explain it. And really, that's just because this is all pretty much the same effect in large part to get it to doing lens anti-lens correction in this case. I did play around a little bit with the VR things because that does spherical mapping. That's very interesting, but you couldn't really get that kind of pullback effect. Uh, this was the only effect I could find in the entire stack of effects that are in Kidding Live to do this. So 
I hope that's eye-opening and gives you some ideas. Again, if you haven't seen those videos on making custom effects, go watch those because uh, you can learn a lot and see about how you can save the stack and maintain those effects and make them reusable, uh, which is really useful in Kid and Live. So if this was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you haven't done that already. Leave a comment. Ask a question for the whole community, not for me, but for everybody, because I'm trying to encourage experience sharing and building each other up because there's power in people, power in community. Thanks for spending just a couple minutes with me. We'll see you at the next video. Take care.